Hello friends, welcome to Dungeons & Dragonfly, where I adapt various characters for use in D&D. I'm Dragonfly9078, and today I'm building Barbara Millicent Roberts, better known as Barbie. After the build, hey, maybe check out my Patreon, if you want. So what do we want from this build? Well, since Barbie has so many jobs and can do basically anything, we'll need to be every class in the game and have proficiency with every skill in the game. We also need to be good at encouraging our friends, so we'll need some abilities to pick them up when they get down and help them accomplish their own goals. And finally, what is Barbie without her accessories? We'll need to get some clothes, of course, but we also need the supplemental materials like the dream house and the car. Looking over at ability scores, I'll be doing a point buy. If you want to roll for stats, it's fine, but since we're doing all the classes, we need all the multiclassing minimums, meaning strength, dexterity, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Since we need all those minimums, we're going to go as even as possible. So 12s in Strength, Constitution, and Wisdom, and 13s in Dexterity, Intelligence, and Charisma. It really doesn't matter which ones are 13s and which ones are 12s, as long as Constitution is one of the 12s and Charisma is one of the 13s. We'll go with Variant Human to bump our non-Constitution 12s up to multiclassing range, take proficiency in Animal Handling, and the Skilled Feat for History, Intimidation, and Smith's Tools. We could, of course, take a third skill from the feat, but we will get all of them without it, so this is a good opportunity to pick up a tool proficiency, since those are a little bit more rare. Barbie is a model and an actress, so we'll take the entertainer background, for proficiency with acrobatics, performance, and disguise kits, which should also help us out with our various outfits. Rogues get the most skills at first level, so we'll start off on the Spy Squad, for proficiency in perception, investigation, sleight of hand, and athletics, along with Thieves' Tools and Thieves' Can't. Then, two of our skills are bumped up to expertises, I'll say performance and animal handling. We can also make sneak attacks if we feel so inclined, adding an extra d6 of damage to a finesse or ranged weapon attack we make if we have advantage on the attack or a friend next to the attack target. Our first multi-class is to Bard, and it's actually the one class in the build with the most levels, since it's the one that fits Barbie the best. Going to Bard gives us insight and one musical instrument. Pick your favorite, I'm sure there's a Barbie for it. Personally, I'm gonna say bagpipes, and before you ask, yes. There is a Bagpipes Barbie. We can use those bagpipes to play inspirational music as a bonus action, giving out a d6 to an ally that they can add to an attack ability check or save in the next 10 minutes. We can hand this out a number of times equal to our charisma modifier, and we get them all back on a long rest. Now thinking about spells, since we're at least dipping one level into every class, we're going to get a lot of them. I did try my best to make them in character for Barbie, but some are going to be a little bit more so than others. Prestidigitation is a bunch of quality of life upgrades, keeping us fresh and clean no matter what situation we find ourselves in. And since Barbie has telekinesis in Starlight Adventure, we'll pick up Mage Hand. Silvery Barbs can make an opponent re-roll an attack, ability check, or save, then give us or a friend advantage on one of those rolls of our own. And Detect Magic lets us... detect magic. So we can find the magical MacGuffin we need to solve the adventure. We do have the option to get more first level Bard spells, but Bard is the only class we're taking that will get access to higher level spells, so we'll be retraining basically as much as we can. Second level bards get Jack of All Trades, for an early head start on being good at everything. This adds half our proficiency to any ability checks we make that don't include the whole thing. Of course, once we get proficiency with all skills, this won't be quite as useful, but it'll still apply to our initiative and, you know, like checks with tools that we're not proficient with. Then Song of Rest uses the soothing sound of our bagpipes to add a free d6 to our friends who regain health during a short rest. We get two more expertises, I'll say Insight and Athletics, then as a lore bard we get three more skills medicine, nature, and survival. With Cutting Words, we can swap our inspiration for demoralization, subtracting our bardic inspiration die from an enemy's attack, ability check, or damage roll. This is usually seen as insulting the enemy, but it could also be persuading them so hard that they start to lose focus as they see things our way. For second level spells, Animal Messenger uses one of the tiny animals that we're so friendly with to send a message of 25 words or less to a person we describe at a location we specify and aid increases the current and maximum HP of up to three creatures by five for eight hours. Now, a core conceit of the character of Barbie is that a lot of the time she's just an actress playing the part of Rapunzel, or a surfer who meets mermaids, or a girl who gets sucked into a video game, or what have you. So we'll take the actor feat. That bumps our charisma by one to 14, so we have two uses of bardic inspiration, gives us advantage on deception and performance checks to pretend to be another person, and lets us mimic people's speech and animals' noises if we've listened to them for at least a minute. Vicious Mockery is similar to our cutting words, talking an enemy down and making them rethink their actions, dealing up to 4d4 psychic damage on a failed wisdom save, and giving them disadvantage on their next attack. Then Lesser Restoration uses healing magic to cure a disease or an instance of blindness, deafness, paralysis, or poison. 
Fifth level bards get Font of Inspiration, so our Inspiration dice come back on any rest. Plus, the dice themselves upgrade to D8s. For third level spells, Dispel Magic can break certain magical effects, though it can't remove curses, so we still need to actually go on the majority of our adventures. Then Tongues lets us understand all languages and be understood by anyone who speaks a language. Motivational Speech rallies our friends and allies with a minute-long speech. Up to five creatures get five temporary HP and advantage on wisdom saves. And if they're hit by an attack, they get advantage on their own next attack. Though once a creature's temporary HP are gone, the spell ends for that creature. And Mass Healing Word heals up to six creatures within 60 feet of us for 1d4 plus our charisma modifier. More importantly, as a lore bard, we get some magical secrets at this level. Spells from any list that count as bard spells for us. First up is a mainstay on the channel, Find Vehicle which summons our pink corvette and gives us expertise with driving it when we're behind the wheel. Then Galder's Tower gives us the Dreamhouse playset, creating a two-story tower furnished however we choose. This playset does require some assembly, however, as we can use higher level spell slots to add floors, and if we cast the spell on the same spot every day for a year, it becomes permanent. Last of all, for Bard at least, is Counter Charm, a performance we can start and maintain as an action that gives allies within 30 feet of us advantage on saves against being charmed or frightened. It's hard to be charmed while there are bagpipes playing within 30 feet of you. At least, it's hard to be charmed by things other than the bagpipes. Next up, we'll become a true horse girl as a ranger. Multiclassing into ranger gives us another skill, in this case, stealth. We're a natural explorer, letting us ignore difficult terrain and giving us advantage on initiative rolls, as well as on attack rolls against creatures that haven't acted yet in the first round of combat, plus a whole bunch of benefits to overland travel. Then we can pick a favored enemy, choosing between beasts, fey, humanoids, monstrosities, and undead. I would say either beasts, fey, or humanoids are the way to go, depending on what movie you're in. Whichever we take, we get plus two damage on our attacks against them, and advantage on survival and intelligence checks regarding them. Cleric is probably the trickiest class to justify for Barbie, since she's generally not a religious figure, but there is the International Beauty Collection, where each one is a fantasy goddess of a specific continent or region. Specifically, the Knowledge Domain Cleric gets us not just proficiency, but expertise in two intelligence-based skills, like Arcana and Religion along with Command and Identify as Domain Spells. For cantrips, we get some medical skills with Spare the Dying, Virtue to give a few temporary HP for a round, and Thaumaturgy, which is like prestidigitation but for more dramatic effects. If nothing else, it can help us project if we're ever performing on the stage. Clerics can prepare from their entire list, so we have access to all of the first level Cleric spells. Some notable ones are Cure Wounds, the non-mass single target version of Healing Word, Bless, Bane, Sanctuary, and Shield of Faith. Actually sticking around for a second level, we can channel divinity, either turning all undead in a 30-foot radius if they fail their wisdom save, or using the knowledge of the ages to get proficiency with any skill or tool for 10 minutes. Getting a bunch of tool proficiencies is a lot trickier than getting all the skills, so we'll cheat a little bit and use this to get proficiency with whatever tool we need to do whatever job we have at the moment. Next, we'll head over to Fairytopia as an Archfey Warlock. Once per rest, we can unleash our Fey Presence as an action either charming or frightening every creature in a 10-foot cube who fail their wisdom saves. For cantrips, we can grab friends to get advantage on charisma checks against a given person, though they then become hostile to us. Just goes to show, you don't need magic to make friends, and trying to do so will just hurt you in the long run. And one spell I definitely did not anticipate being in flavor is Eldritch Blast. But, as her superhero alter ego Super Sparkle, she can actually shoot energy blasts, so there you go. We'll take Sense Emotion for some Magical Empathy, and Fairy Fire from the Archfey list for some Fairy Magic. Another second level in a row? Man, we are on a roll! We get one more Warlock spell, let's go with Unseen Servant, because why not? And we get two Eldritch Invocations. First up is Beguiling Influence, which gives us Deception and Persuasion proficiencies, the last two that we need. We officially have all the skills. Then Beast Speech lets us cast Speak with Animals at will, since Barbie tends to have at least one animal she can understand more than the others. Now, I know I just said we were on a roll with the two level classes, but we're level 12 now, and there are eight more classes to go, so one level dips for each. First up is a mermaid tail as a sea sorcerer. Our soul of the sea gives us a swimming speed and lets us breathe underwater. And the curse of the sea enhances our spells that deal lightning or cold damage or push a creature. When we hit a creature with a cantrip attack or they fail their save against one, we curse them for a turn. Then, if we cast a spell that deals lightning damage to them, they take extra damage equal to our charisma modifier. If we cast one that deals cold, their speed is reduced by 15 feet, and if we cast one that moves them, they move an additional 15 feet. And very considerately, sorcerers get some spells that do those things, like Gust, which can push a creature 5 feet if they fail a strength save, or 20 with the Curse of the Sea, and Ice Knife, which deals piercing damage on a hit, then explodes to deal cold damage on a failed dexterity save. 
Other Sorcerer cantrips include Blade Ward, Light, and On Off, and we can pick up Mage Armor here for a nice round 14 AC. Though, since we dipped into Cleric, we do have Medium Armor proficiency, so that's usually going to be better. This does work with any outfit, though. Truly, the best of accessories. Barbie the video game hero programs her own video games, so I think she qualifies as an artificer. We get proficiency with Tinker's tools, which are good for a variety of professions, though they do tend to fall short when compared to more specialized tools. And as a magical tinkerer, we can program magical effects into non-magical objects, making them glow, play a sound, display a message, you know, little sensory type stuff like that. Our cantrips will be Guidance and Resistance to add a d4 to our friend's ability checks and saving throws respectively. Then like clerics, artificers prep from their entire list. So we have access to great spells like Arcane Weapon, Expeditious Retreat, Disguise Self, and Catapult. Barbarian's another kind of tricky sell for Barbie, but in addition to her name literally being Barbie, there is in fact the Princess of the Vikings Barbie. Unarmored Defense makes our AC 10 plus our Dexterity and Constitution modifiers. That's 12 for those of you keeping score at home, which is worse than Mage Armor, so, you know, don't bother. We can also enter a Rage as a bonus action, probably because someone hurt our friends. We get advantage on strength checks and saves, we take half damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, and our strength-based melee attacks deal extra damage. For druid representation, there's honestly a plethora of options, from the mermaid and dolphin movies, to the collection where she's various nature spirits, to, you know, just wildlife conservationist Barbie. Unfortunately, all we get from one level of druid is spells, though like clerics and artificers, druids prep from their entire list, so it is a wide variety of spells. In addition to our cantrips, Druid Craft and Shape Water, we can get some fun ones like Create or Destroy Water, Animal Friendship, and Goodberry. There's no shortage of Barbies doing karate and other martial arts, so Monk is not a problem, as our Olympic level martial arts lets us deal a d4 with our unarmed strikes, use our dexterity instead of our strength for the attack and damage rolls of our unarmed strikes, and make an unarmed strike as a bonus action after taking the attack action. We also get another armored defense here, one that's based on wisdom instead of charisma, but Again, that's only 12, not worth bothering with. As a member of the Three Musketeers, and therefore a fighter, we get a fighting style. I think the one that makes the most sense overall is Superior Technique, which gives us a maneuver from the Battlemaster list and a d6 superiority die to use it. We'll take Commanding Presence, letting us add our d6 to an Intimidation, Persuasion, or Performance check we make once per rest. Then Second Wind lets us sit down for a sec to catch our breath, healing ourselves for 1d10 plus 1 as a bonus action, again once per rest. A Pegasus Rider seems sufficiently Paladin-y to me, so the magic of Pegasus will give us a Divine Sense, letting us know the locations of any Celestials, Fiends, or Undead within 60 feet three times per day, as well as Lay on Hands, to heal someone for up to 5 HP per day with a touch. Our Capstone sees us going through the secret door to become a Wizard. Our cantrips here are Mending, Message, and True Strike, and we'll take Find Familiar for an Animal Companion, Featherfall to use our Fairy Wings or Superpowers to float, then Alarm, Comprehend Languages, Jump, and Longstrider. Though we definitely wouldn't use those last two at the Olympics, that would not be very sportswoman-like. And finally, Arcane Recovery lets us get back a first level spell slot once per day during a short rest. Now that the build is complete, the question becomes, how good is it? Well, our number one asset is our versatility. We've got proficiency in every skill, access to proficiency with any tool we might need, 19 different cantrips, and access to the bulk of all the first level spells in the game. Not to mention all the class features we have, like Natural Explorer, Magical Tinkering, Rage, and Curse of the Sea. Our main focus is on our supporting our friends, though, with our deeper leaning into our bard levels providing inspiration dice, counter charm, and higher level spells to help the team out. We're also decently mobile. Having a swim speed is nice, as is breathing underwater, and if we need to get somewhere in a hurry, we have Fine Vehicle. Not to mention, we ended up as a 12th level spellcaster, so we get up to 6 level spell slots, and using a 5th level spell slot for Fine Vehicle, Let's us call in an airplane if we want. On the other hand, dipping into every class has some very major and very obvious downsides. We don't get higher level class features or higher level spells, so our 6th level spell slot is restricted to upcasting primarily 1st level spells. We're also a little bit fragile. We're actually kind of hard to hit since we can wear medium armor and pick up a shield for 18 AC, then we have spells like Shield of Faith and Sanctuary, but if we do take damage, we're in trouble, since we're hovering just below a total of 120 HP. And finally, having our ability scores be so uniform is really restricting. Our Charisma is our highest stat, and it's only a plus 2 modifier. That means our save DCs don't go above 16, our attacks don't have good modifiers, and among other things, we only have 2 Bardic Inspiration dice per rest. Barbie, you're beautiful. You make me feel my Barbie doll.
is really real. Barbie's small and so petite. Her clothes and figure look so neat. Her dancing outfit rings the bell. At parties she will cast a spell. Purses, hats, and gloves galore. And all the gadgets gals adore. Thank you for watching, friends. I hope you enjoyed the build. No poll again this week. Next week is a Patreon request, so be on the lookout for that. If you have any feedback or suggestions for characters you'd like to see me build, please leave them in the comments below, and they could show up in a future poll. Leave a like or subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support what I'm doing here, you can check the description for the link to my Patreon, for access to the Discord channel, early access to future builds, and exclusive Patreon content. Thanks again for watching, friends. I will see y'all later.